Hey everyone, in this video I will explain a feature that's very important in Relicos Tycoon 2, but which very few people really understand. I am talking here about park rating, the little bar in the bottom left of the screen. When you click it you can see a graph of how the park rating evolved over time. The park rating can have a value of 0 to 999. Now what does the park rating actually do? First of all, you need to have it have it above a certain value to beat most scenarios that have an objective where you need to reach a certain amount of guests. Some scenarios also don't allow you to drop the park rating below 700. Second, the park rating helps to attract guests. Park rating is an important factor in the formula that decides the probability for a guest to spawn. If your park rating is higher than 850, the maximum amount of guests will spawn. If your park rating is very low, only very few guests will spawn. So how is park rating actually calculated? Keep in mind, the following numbers have been taken from the source code of Open Rollercoast Tycoon 2, and the numbers should be the same as in the original Rollercoast Tycoon 2. First off, the game starts the park rating with a value of 1150. There are also scenarios which have an option for more difficult park rating enabled, and those scenarios start with a value of 1050. Then the game takes the number of guests in your park, and divides it by 13. If there are more than 2000 guests in your park, the formula will simply use the value 2000. Dividing the number of guests by 13 will give a value between 0 and 153. This value is subtracted from 150, which will give a value from minus 3 to 150. This number is then subtracted from the original park rating. So, to make it easier to understand, if you have zero guests in your park, the park rating would now be 150 less than it was. If you have 2000 guests or more, the park rating will now be 3 higher. After this, the formula will count the number of happy guests. Happy guests are guests who have more than 50% happiness. First, 500 is subtracted from the park rating. Then the number of happy guests is multiplied by 300 and then divided by the total number of guests in the park. If this value is higher than 250, the value 250 is instead used. Then this value is multiplied by 2 and added to the park rating. This was probably hard to follow. So in human language, it means that you lose 500 points of park rating if you have no happy guests in your park. And you will lose no points from your park rating if at least 83% of your guests are happy. The formula also counts the number of guests who are both lost and unable to find the park exit. If this number is higher than 25, then every lost guest unable to find a park exit above the 25 will cost your park rating 7 points. So starting from 26 guests who are lost and unable to find a park, you will lose park rating. And the penalty from, uh, from these guests uh, has no limit. So it has the potential to bring your park rating all the way down to zero if you have many guests who are lost and unable to find a park exit. If you see the park rating plummet all the way down to zero, there's a high chance you may have trapped your guests somewhere. The next thing that factors into the park rating is the uptime of your rides. The ride uptime is defined as 100 minus the downtime. If you select a ride, then under the maintenance tab you can see the downtime of your ride. The game will calculate the average uptime from, for all your rides, which will give a number from 0 to 100. So first, 200 is subtracted from the park rating, and then the average ride uptime is multiplied by 2 and added to the park rating. To make this calculation easier to understand, if your rides are down 100% of the time, you lose 200 points of park rating. If your rides are always up 100% of the time, the park rating will not be affected. It is probably a good idea to hire enough mechanics so your ride stay up for uh, most of the time. Next, there's an attribute that has only a small effect on the park rating. Uh, the game will calculate the average intensity and excitement of your rides, 
and we'll compare them to a certain target value. So it will check how close the average excitement is to 3.68 and how close the average intensity is to a value of 5.2. The further away the average uh, excitement and intensity are from these numbers, the higher the penalty will be. Thankfully this penalty is low and is maximized to uh, about 100 points. I typically ignore this part of the function when I have to maintain a high pike rating because it usually only has a small effect and it's typically not something you can really do much about. The next part of the function has an effect that's a little bit higher. The intensity and excitement values of all your rides are added up, multiplied by 100 and divided by 8. These values for intensity and excitement must both be higher than 1000 to get no penalty. So to translate this to in-game stats, if you add up all the excitement values of your rides, they must add up to over uh, 80 excitement. The same goes for the intensity. The total intensity of all your rides combined should be higher than 80. So if the values are both zero, uh, you lose 200 points of park rating. If both values are over 80, then it has no effect on the park rating. Okay, after this, uh, we get to a really important part of the park rating, uh, which is litter. The formula calculates, uh, well, it counts every instance of litter or vomit in your park except the ones that have been dropped very recently, so you still have a bit of time to clean them up. And for every uh, instance of litter or from, from it, it subtracts 4 points from the park rating. And this penalty can go up to 600 points, so it can take a huge chunk out of your park rating. When your park gets bigger, you should make sure to have enough handymen to clean up everything your guests leave behind. And it's probably a good idea to, uh, to have some zones in uh, well, to have zones for your handyman in some problematic areas, for example in an area which has a lot of uh, shops. The final thing that affects the park rating is deadly casualties. Unsurprisingly, people that die in your park will have a negative influence on your reputation. For every guest that drowns in your park, 25 points will be subtracted from the park rating to a maximum of 1000 points. For every vehicle that crashes with guests in it, 200 will be added to the penalty, as long as it is below 500. This penalty will slowly get lower over time. In normal scenarios, this pen penalty diminishes by 7 every day. In scenarios without money, this penalty for some reason diminishes by 40 every day, probably because you have unlimited funds to cover up the accident. So, to summarize everything, because it probably was a lot of information, um, you start with a park rating of 1150 or 1050 in a park with more difficult park rating. Then a number from minus 3 to 150 is subtracted based on the number of guests in your park. Then a number of 0 to 500 is subtracted based on the number of happy guests in your park. After that the number of guests who are lost and cannot find the park exit and subtract a number from 0 to infinity. The ride up time will subtract a number from 0 to 200 from the park rating. The average ride excitement and intensity can subtract up to 100 points from the park rating. The total excitement and intensity can subtract up to 200 points from the park rating. Litter and vomit will subtract up to 600 points from the park rating. And deadly casualties can take a value from 0 to 1000 from the park rating. Anyway, that was everything that uh, factors into the park rating. If the result of the mentioned calculations is lower than zero, the resulting park rating will be zero. The maximum value for park rating is 999. Of course, if you have difficulty keeping your park rating high, you can always use cheats to keep it at a high value. I hope this explanation was clear to you. I can understand if some parts were a little bit difficult to follow. I have also this, uh, posted this guide in text form on the Open Rollercast Tycoon 2 forums. I will leave a link in the description where you can take your time to read all the information at your own pace. I plan to do more of these explanations in the future. I hope you guys like them. I will also provide a link to my Discord in the description. Joining it will give you access to my multiplayer server and I can help you with any questions you have there. 
Alright, that was it for this video. See you again in the next one.